Hi there, Miss Brown is back. Today we're going to have a lesson on phylum Porifera, the sponges. Now these were once confused as plants, but we know now they're animals. So we're in Kingdom Animalia and now phylum Porifera. Number one, your organizer asks you to label the diagram at the bottom where it says this animal is a and write in sponge. Now why do we call them Porifera? Uh, the name actually came from the pores in the body of the animal. Pores in the body number two. So these pores, of course, have names. So moving on to number three, we can look here and see that in-current pores carry water into the animal's body. And the ex-current pores carry water out. And it's like a pump at work. It's a very efficient pump. So let's label uh, B, the incoming in-current pores, Ostia, O-S-T-I-A, right here, Ostia. And then let's label A at the top, we'll label it the Osculum, Osculum. I remember this, Ostia has an I in it, and N starts with I or N current, that's how I remember that one. And the Osculum is at the top. And number four says the excurrent pore is called an Osculum. Now it asks you to draw arrows on number five. So draw an arrow from the side into the sponge to the center, and then draw another arrow out the top. And that's the way that the uh, water flows. It flows in the side and then out the top. And number six, a sponge the size of your index finger, your pointer finger, can pump up to six gallons of water a day through its body. So you can imagine how much water a very large sponge could pump through. Now, uh, natural sponges, number seven, are mostly marine and should not be confused with the man-made synthetic sponges that we buy at the store, the pink and yellow and green perfectly square ones. Those, of course, are man-made. Now, sponges are very simple, multicellular animals. They don't have any tissues, organs. Remember, cells make tissues, make organs, make systems, make organisms. So this one's very simple. It just has cells. It doesn't have any type of organs or anything like that. So number nine, cells in a sponge's body show cell specialization and division of labor. It has certain cells that do certain jobs, which we'll get into uh, in a moment. All right, number 10, sponges are non-motile, sessile, means they're connected to the bottom animals, and they have no set body plan, so we refer to them as being asymmetrical. Uh, for lack of a better word, most, mostly they're just kind of blobs is the best way I can describe it. All right, the outside of the body is covered by an epidermis, and the inside is lined with special feeding cells called coanocytes. And it asks you to label the coanocytes, and those are up at the top on C. You'll see those in the video. They're very interesting cells, and they keep the water moving, so, it's, uh, so it pumps. Now, they feed by their filter feeders, filter feeding process, and the flagella on the coanocytes keep the water currents moving through the body. Now, there's also specialized cells called amoebocytes, and they pick up and deliver materials through the body. They carry good things in and carry the waste out. Uh, they're much like the mailman of the sponge. Now, the sponge's body is supported by a skeleton of spicules, or it could have sponge in it. Now, the spicules are hard, and they're made of calcium or silica, and the sponge is soft and made of protein. So, number 15, a good bath sponge should have a skeleton, of course, of sponging. If you use a sponge with spicules, you're going to get a little bit more exfoliation than you probably uh, would care for. Now, 16, sponges reproduce asexually by forming buds. So, it grows another being off the side of its body, and when it's big enough, it breaks off and goes off on its own. So, um, D is a bud on your diagram. All right, 17, individual sponge... Cells can actually regrow a sponge from regeneration, so they can regenerate. And sponges form special dormant stages called gemmules they, to survive adverse conditions. So if it's too dry, or the temperature's wrong, or there's not enough food, or there's severe pollution, they actually can dry up into these gemmules and come back uh, quite a bit of time later, maybe even years later. They also can reproduce sexually, and you'll see kind of how this works on the video. They form sperm and egg that join together to make larvae that are motile. Uh, most of them are hermaphrodites, but they cross-fertilize with another sponge. They don't fertilize themselves. That really wouldn't have a point. It may as well bud, right? So reasons that sponges um, are important to us or to our environment. Uh, pick three of these, please. 
to write down there. And thank you.